unbelievable what is coming to light now. We are currently seeing new leaks on social media almost hourly from people who are being debunked in the USA due to political attacks. I reported on this yesterday how Elon Musk and others shared what really went viral in the Joe Rogan podcast. And now, more and more people are opening up, and now, the former Meta CEO David Marcus has actually spoken out and is talking about the devious machinations of the Biden administration and political opponents who have definitely launched an attack against crypto. He talks about the death of Libra, a stablecoin that Facebook, or rather, Meta wanted to release and how it was systematically made impossible for people to launch the stablecoin by the Fed and many, many institutions, even though they actually already had preliminary approval. And now we are seeing a chain reaction as it really comes to light in 2021 that crypto, Bitcoin, and much more are being massively fought against. I've been thinking a lot about this in the past few days, and there's always the saying from Michael Saylor, where he says, soon all the Bitcoin companies will come and so on, and they'll be betting big on Bitcoin. And now it's becoming clear to me why Mark Zuckerberg and others aren't betting on Bitcoin, simply put, because they are massively afraid of regulation, of the danger, and of the debanking that is happening here, such as so brutal. Thousand, we're going to go through all the cases shortly because it makes no sense at all. Mark Zuckerberg's goat is called Bitcoin, and it also makes no sense because, game theoretically, it would make so much sense for Facebook Meta to obviously bet on Bitcoin. But of course, if you've already had such bad experiences with Libra, and we'll look at that shortly, it really has its implications, then it's also clear that Mark Zuckerberg can't publicly bet on Bitcoin because so many people speculate, yeah, why don't they just bet on Bitcoin? They could bet on Bitcoin and they would benefit so massively. No, they wouldn't benefit from it because they would have even more problems with debanking. And if you still need fiat rails here, if you're still connected to the fiat world, like Mark Zuckerberg with Meta and so on, then you can't just completely exclude yourself from the system, so to speak. It has also come out in hindsight. Mark Zuckerberg has publicly admitted that he was pressured to massively censor on social media. And the same could have threatened him now with some banking censorship. And that's why I assume that you aren't betting on Bitcoin out of fear of getting into even more trouble, so to speak. And yes, I know it's still a wild conspiracy theory right now, but believe me, what I'm about to show you really has some substance. David Marcus, the former Meta CEO, clearly states here, I've never shared this publicly before, but since Mark Andreessen uncovered all the debanking cases in the Joe Rogan podcast in 2021 and has now brought up the topic, it seems fitting to shed more light on the story. And then he first talks about how, in the end, Libra or Later, DM was basically a stablecoin and that all the regulation was already in place and that the approval was essentially already there. And then he says here, ultimately, Fed Chair Jerome Powell was willing to let us start with limitations. As I heard, Janet Yellen, the then Secretary of the Treasury, supposedly told Powell during one of their biweekly meetings that it would be political suicide to push this project forward and that they would not support him if he allowed it. And here you can already see that Janet Yellen, who was also a massive opponent of Bitcoin, absolutely did not want to allow alternatives to the dollar because Bitcoin, stable coins, and so on are all alternatives to the US dollar. And there was a massive pushback against this. This clearly indicates that these are political attacks. It's not just about censorship here. It's even about sanctions. Mark Andreessen even compared these sanctions that are happening here to the sanctions that Iran has to endure. So now they are basically imposing sanctions that are usually applied to terrorists or terrorists in quotes, and they are now applying the same sanctions against their own citizens. David Marcus also says he is deeply hurt and never imagined that the USA would drift into such a shithole. But this is now the reality. It's not just thousands of individual cases of debanking happening, but really a chain of people being debanked. We have banks being debanked, we have companies being debanked, and we have major entrepreneurs like large individual businesses and billionaires being debanked. We have the whole list. Anyone who is basically against the political regime or the US dollar or anything to do with Bitcoin or crypto is simply being categorically debanked. We're essentially shutting down the entire banking platform for them. David Marcus also mentions a crucial point that I want to make. There was no legal or regulatory approach through which the government or government agencies could have stopped the project. It was, mind you, 100% a political decision, one that was enforced through the intimidation of dependent banking institutions. For me personally, that was the hardest part of this story. It's not that we had failed, but that America, this country I immigrated to and became a proud citizen of because it is based on the rule of law and values, has behaved this way for political reasons. That was a very bitter pill to swallow, and one can only agree. It simply cannot be that political opponents or people with different views have their bank accounts shut down. And later, we will also delve into the insidious machinations behind these bank closures, as there are indeed many. More people who have opened up about this. In 2021, there was actually a Twitter user or an entrepreneur who spoke up, saying that now is the time to let the genie out of the bottle 
and he is now naming the banks that were responsible for such sanctions. He clearly names Bank of America and says it was very, very insidious how they handled it. They simply sent him some letters and said he needed to fill out all the forms, assuming that the person who had a bank account was now a money service business. And of course, a money service business needs a banking license. So they just sent people a ton of letters and they had to fill out all these forms, but they couldn't even fill them out properly. And then they simply received the confirmation, oh, your bank account is now canceled. The same happened to other people like Caitlin Long with the Custodian Bank, which was completely shut down because it was a competitor to Bank of America and JP Morgan. The big banks are politically protected and that's always the problem. There are also statistics showing that in the last 10 years, almost no small banks have opened in the US while the monopolies of the big banks keep growing. There are really cartel-like things happening here and they definitely want to wipe out Bitcoin and small banks, which I actually found to be crazy. Raul Powell reports that he wanted to start a bank in 2012 that wasn't based on fractional reserve, meaning that you could somehow create 100% new credit from just 1% deposits. And he basically says that the Federal Reserve panicked that this non-fractional reserve bank would ultimately suck all the deposits out of the fiat money system because it would be practicing banking not on a debt-based system, but on a backed money system, so to speak, literally. And it can't be that competition to the fiat money system is created here. So they simply didn't grant him the banking license or the approval. And the list goes on and on. Check out what other excuses were given here. I stayed silent for almost a year out of fear. But now that everyone is publishing this stuff, I'm sharing what happened to me too. Last December, I received a call from JP Morgan saying that we need to close the accounts of anyone whose main source of income or wealth is crypto. This comes directly from the top leadership of Jamie Dimon. I'm really sorry. I had a close relationship with my banker. So I suspect that 99% of people wouldn't even have received this kind of transparency or explanation. I wanted to add my name to the list of Debent OCP. It's real. It's happening. Hopefully it will be over soon. So at least he got a response. Most people here apparently didn't get any response at all. Their accounts are just being shut down. But here they really let the cat out of the bag and clearly said, hey, it was simply because you had something to do with Bitcoin or crypto. And that's why you are being excluded from the banking system. But what you can take away from the story is that you can definitely find a lot of positive aspects. And that's what David Marcus is talking about here, why he is now heavily investing in Bitcoin, since he has experienced all of this, that despite all the regulations he has complied with, and despite having met all the legal criteria and ultimately doing everything perfectly, his bank accounts are still being closed. It taught him one thing, that you shouldn't rely on centralized technologies, but rather need decentralized structures. And he says about this incident, we have also learned the biggest lesson of all, namely, that if you try to establish an open monetary network for the world that ultimately moves trillions of dollars a day and is meant to last for 100 years, you have to build it on the most neutral, decentralized, and unassailable network and asset, which is undoubtedly Bitcoin. And David Marcus, who was initially involved with PayPal and then tried to launch a stablecoin with Libra, which failed due to political whims, has now realized that Bitcoin is the ultimate master tool. He is now heavily focusing on decentralized technology with LightSpark, his new company on lightning settlements, lightning payments, and wants to improve the payment infrastructure for Bitcoin because he has recognized that Bitcoin is the most important tool, the greatest achievement we have as humanity to build a bank independent infrastructure that brings us more freedom. Similar to how Jack Dorsey with Block has also recognized that it's not PayPal and centralized providers that are the way to go in 2021, but rather we need a decentralized structure with Bitcoin. David Marcus has recognized this. It will be interesting to see if Mark Zuckerberg will also come to this realization and perhaps focus more on Bitcoin and decentralized technologies. Elon Musk was also with PayPal in the past and now, I would say, is not heavily focused on Bitcoin, but at least he has bought some Bitcoin and so on. So he will definitely have it on his radar. And this is a very, very interesting movement that we currently have, and I will continue to observe it. In 2021, if you want to buy Bitcoin now, I'll put a link below to 21 Bitcoin, the easiest way to buy Bitcoin in Europe, so you never get debanked or anything like that. Such a thing can't happen with Bitcoin. Here, with the code Bitcoin Hotel, you can still get up to 20% off the fees. When buying Bitcoin, let me know below what you think about the current movements. I find it really fascinating. But on the other hand, also shocking what's going on here. Until then, peace out, usand.